The John Morris Show, episode 75. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Hey there, my name's John Morris. I'm a former U.S. Army veteran turned freelance web developer. And my goal for you at this podcast is twofold. First, I want to help you learn how to code. Second, I want to help you turn that code into a full-time living. Because if you're like me, what you want is the freedom, the satisfaction, and the income that you get from being a high-profile web developer. So if that's you, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube so you never miss an episode. You can find all my past episodes and get subscribed at johnmorrisonline.com slash John. Morris show. Also, as you get value from the show, consider becoming a supporting listener on Patreon because you'll help keep the show free for everyone and you'll get access to exclusive courses, source code, and Q&A sessions available only to supporting listeners. Visit johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, to become a supporting listener. All right, let's get into this episode. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the John Morris Show, johnmorrisonline.com. I'm your host, John Morris. This week's tech tutorial, I got something for you. Now, this isn't going to be a big, massive kind of application like creating a contact form or some of the other stuff that I've done, but this video is really for that guy or that gal that's out there. I promise you they're out there right now. They're scouring Google looking for the answer to this very, very simple question but can be a little bit annoying and frustrating to try and find. So I'm going to show you what this is, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about why this has bigger implications for your coding career, even if you're not struggling with this particular problem. All right, so one thing before I get into this, if you are that guy or gal that's been searching for this and what I just said is exactly what uh, you were thinking, then go ahead and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you and see what you thought of the video. All right. So here's the problem. Let's say you have an array and you don't know what the keys in that array are going to be, but you need to get the first one. You need to get the first element out of that array. You need need to get the value from that. So in our example here, I've created a simple array, uh, R equals array, and I've mixed had it mixed. So dog, uh, the first element, the key is dog, the value is woof. (laughs) The second one, the key is four and the value is seven. And then the third one, the key is name and the value is whatevs. So let's say for some reason that you have uh, an array like this. Now, I I don't know the situation where that might come up, but I kind of looked at this online and it seemed like a lot of people were searching for or wanting to know how to do this kind of thing. So apparently it's coming up. So again, What we're assuming here, though, is that you don't know these keys, so you can't just echo out array and then, you know, the the brackets and and dog because you don't know what this key is for whatever reason, okay? So maybe you're building the array programmatically. You're not sure what's going to be put in that first uh, first element, so you need to get the value from that. So I'm going to show you a series of different ways that you can do this. This isn't every single way that you can do this, and... There's these aren't necessarily I'm not saying these are the best or the worst or whatever, but you'll see some of these are pretty straightforward, pretty efficient uh, and so should work pretty well for you. So the first one is using the reset function in PHP. And so it's pretty straightforward. Now, the thing to know about reset uh, is what it does is it sets the internal pointer uh, in PHP to the first element in the array. Now. PHP has an internal pointer for when it's looping through arrays. And so it, that 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 functionality, I guess, is, is built into PHP. And so now you can use that uh, in this particular instance by using reset. So what it actually does is, again, it sets the internal po- pointer back to the first element. It resets the internal pointer. But when it does that, it also returns the value of the first, that first element that it got reset to. And so we can set our variable equal to reset and array, and that's going to give us the value of that first element. And then we can come down here and simply echo that out 
and you'll see here we have woof because that is the value of the first element in the array. So you can see this is a very quick, straightforward, concise way of doing this. If you don't really have any constraints on you, this may be the, the best way to do that because uh, you know you don't have to worry about any sort anything that could be going on in the background with the pointer maybe not being on the first element in the array. And we'll talk about that here in just a second. But this will actually set it back to the first element and then return the value of that element. Okay, so pretty, it's a fairly foolproof way of doing this. Now, it could be entirely possible that for some reason with what you're doing, you can't do this. So we'll move on to some more examples. So the second one is using current. So what current does is it returns the current, uh, it returns the current element in the array. So it gives you the value of the current element. So if we set first equal to current in our array, since we haven't been doing any looping, there's nothing else affecting this uh, the, the, the program up to this point, then we are the current element that we're going to be on is the first element. And so we can use that then again to find that first element. And you can see again when we echo that out, it's set to woof. Now, like I said, the difference between current and reset is that current is going to give you whatever one it's on. So it could be on the third one for some reason, but reset is going to reset it to the first one and give you the first one. That's why that one is probably a little more foolproof. Now, again, depending on your program and what you're doing, current may be a better option for you. Just kind of depends what it is that you're doing. All right, next, we can use the key function to get the first key. So what this does is it, it really, it, it, it works, it's kind of the sister or sister function of current in a way, because it's going to return the key the key of the current array position. So let's say in this case, you don't need the value, you need the key. Well, key, the key function is going to give you that. So it's going to return the key of the current of the uh, element in the, the current array position. So if we set first equal to key, in this case, it happens to be set to the first element in the array. So we're going to get again, dog as the key because in our array, that's the key for the first element. Okay. Now, if you wanted to get the key and make sure you're on the first one, you could actually use reset and key in conjunction with one each one another to make sure that the array is set back to that first element and then grab the key from it. So if you wanted that extra check in there, you could certainly do that as well. All right. Next up, we have array keys. So this is a little bit more involved, but again, depending on your situation, what you're doing, this may be the route you have to go. So what array keys does is it gives you an array of the keys from the original array. <laughs> so this is our original array. We're running array keys on it. And what we get back is an array of the keys. So we're going to get back an array that has dog, for, and name. From there, we can then use that because now we have an indexed array. So we know that the, va the key of the first position or the first element in this new array of keys is going to be zero because it always starts at zero. So now we can use that to get array key. We can use the uh, c reference our original array and use our keys element, which this, this will be set to the value of keys zero in this context will be dog. So then we're reference this is like typing in dog like this. That's essentially, it's the, it's the same thing just done programmatically because we don't know what that that first key is so we're getting it programmatically right this is actually something because a lot of times arrays aren't used like this you'll you'll not necessarily use this for the first element but you could use it for the second or the third or the fourth where maybe some of these other options aren't going to work for example reset if you wanted the second element in the array right reset's not going to work there current's probably not going to work there key's probably not going to work there. So in this case, something like this would work and you could just change this if you wanted the second element in the array, change it to one. Now you'd get the second element in the array. Okay, so this is the one that you'll probably actually use more simply because you can use it not only for the first element, but the second, the third, the 10th, the 153rd, whatever you want to do. All right. Next, we can use list to get the first value. So what list, the list function does, it's really actually more of 
a language construct, but what it does is it assigns variables as if they were an array. So what we do is we, we, we start our list function, use parentheses just like we normally do. And then if we know the number of, if we know the number of um, elements in the array, we specify variables that we want those elements, the values of those elements, or the, we want them um, put into. So for example, first, second, third, we're, we're targeting this element for first, this one for second, and this one for third. And then we're running array values on that. So this is, the thing about list is it only works with indexed arrays. Since we have a mixed array here, then we can't just run list on it. We have to first use array values on that array to get an indexed array of just the values. And then we can use these. Now, and so the first, the value in the first element will be set to first. The value in the second element will be set to second and the value of the third element will be set to third. Now, if you're, you know, if you're kind of being creative and thinking about this, you could use array keys here as well if you wanted the keys. Okay, so you could use array keys again here. And then once we have that, these, what list does is turn these into variables that we can use. So then you see here, we're just echoing out first. So list is gonna look through this array essentially and create variables out of the elements. So, and set them equal to the values of the corresponding elements. All right, so we can just echo first here. Of course, you could echo second or third too if you wanted access to the second or third. The big thing here is that you you kind of need to know how many elements you have in the array so that you can set your, your variables accordingly. So maybe not quite as good as this one up here. All right, the final one then is, let's say you don't want the key or the value, but you want the whole element in the array. So you want the whole first element. One way that you can do that, again, not the only way, but one way you can do that is to use array chunk. And so what it does is it splits an array into chunks. And so we're running array chunk on our original array and we're specifying, you know, how many chunks we want. We're specifying, um, you know, the, the, the size of each chunk, how many uh, elements are going to be in each chunk. In this case, we just want the first one. So we're going to specify one. And we're setting it to true here so that it true means it's going to retain its keys, its indexes. So in this case, we're going to do that. Um, you may false, it defaults to false. So you may not need to do this if you don't want to preserve the keys. But if you do, then you can do that here. So it's going to chunk that out and it's going to create a new array with those chunks. And then in order to get the first element in that array, we're going to target it's now an index, you can see here, it's now an index, indexed array of those chunks, and this is gonna return the whole element to us. So we get the whole element here. So if we were to just, let's do a quick print R, just so I can make this a little bit more clear on first, which is our new array, and take a look at this. You see we get a chunk, and in the first chunk is our first element, and then the second chunk is the rest of the array, right? So since we only care about this first element, that's fine because we can just target it with first and then zero by referencing the key here, All right? So that's what we're doing here, All right? So that's that's a bunch of different ways that you can get the first key, the first value, the first element. There's a number of different ways. Some work better than others. Some are better for other situations and so forth. And the big thing though that I want you to get out of this, obviously I want to solve the problem if you're having that problem, but I also want you to 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 realize that a lot of new developers fall into this mindset of there's only one right way to do things and I just need to learn the right way to do something. But that's that, that's not the tr truth at all. The reality is there's a bunch of different ways to do the same thing. I just showed you a bunch of different ways to do the same thing and some have advantages and some have disadvantages. Some work better in certain search situations than others. So it's always dependent on what you're trying to do, what the context of the program is, and so forth, what way you're going to use to accomplish the tasks that you're after. And you need to give up this idea that there's one right way out there to do things. You have a lot of know-it-all developers out there who try to convince people that their way is the right way, the only way that things can be done. And that's not because it's true. It's because it feeds their ego. So don't fall into that trap. Realize that there's a bunch of different ways to do things. Even this simple 
little thing. There's a bunch of different ways, and I could probably find a bunch more to do this. But there's a ton of ways to do things and get things accomplished. Don't fall into the trap that you have to find just the one right way. Uh, and, And don't be afraid to be creative. Be concise. Think about performance. Think about what you're doing, making your code easy to read and so forth. Think about all those things, but also make up your own mind, make up your own decision and do it the way that works for you. You know, it's kind of funny. Every time someone uh, joins my email list, I ask them a very specific question. I ask them, what would you say if I could, if I told you I could teach you how to master PHP in the next few months? And I get a lot of interesting answers. Now I get a lot of people who you know, they say, sign me up. Where do I start? Let's do this, right? I get people who are a little more skeptical who say, um, it would depend on the details, you know, if it costs, what it costs, etc." And then I get people probably on the, the most skeptical end who are like, well, what does it exactly take to master PHP? And all these are really great questions. Now, let me ask you this, since you're here listening. What if I told you, that you could learn everything that you needed to know for PHP to get started working full-time in PHP, to actually get off of that nine to five you hate and start making your living as a coder. You could learn everything that you needed to know. 265 lectures, over 28 hours of content for just 37 bucks. I hope that your answer is a resounding yes. Because I can tell you this is a very unique opportunity compared to the way I had to go through it and the way developers in the past have had to do it. So I don't want you to underestimate this because there's, you know, there's a lot more options out there now today. But I see people out there spending two, three thousand dollars on boot camps, spending tens of thousand dollars go, going to college, and you don't need to do that. You can get started in the next few months, learn everything that you need to learn. And do it for just 37 bucks and learn from someone who's been doing it for a number of years now and knows exactly, they know what you need to learn, they know how to teach it to you, and they're going to do that. So that sounds like, you know, if you're one of those people that's, yeah, where do I sign up? <laughs> Head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash PHP. You want to make sure and use that link specifically. That is an affiliate link, but it's also a discount link. So you're going to get 26% off the regular price of the course and you're getting access like I said to all 265 lectures you also get access to the chat area where you can interact with other students and the instructors there's over 13,000 students enrolled in the course Edwin Diaz is the instructor he's been a freelance web developer for a number of years and knows exactly what he's talking about uh, and is in the there in the chat to help you other students and so forth so you can get this taken care of you can get PHP mastered and you can get down the path get on with your career and making your living as a full-time web developer. So again, don't underestimate this. Don't overlook it just because you may have heard about this stuff before. You can get this taken care of. And all you need to do is go to johnmorrisonline.com slash PHP.